Hey there, Mike Munito Wanner here to share some insights about logging PIC time with you. Uh, after I got my private pilot certificate, uh, but was still doing some ongoing additional training, this was a topic I cared more about and uh, did a lot of research into and discovered some interesting, uh, I wouldn't exactly call them loopholes, but uh, things that you wouldn't ordinarily uh, think of or realize without digging deeper into it. So um, a lot of stuff I learned about that during that process. Haven't thought about it too much lately. So the first uh, loophole uh, that allows you to log time that you're not quite qualified for is logging PIC time uh, while uh, flying in a tailwheel high performance or complex aircraft. That normally requires an additional endorsement. And of course, if uh, you're trying to fly it by yourself and you don't have the endorsement, you cannot act as PIC, so you can't do it. However, if you're flying with a friend that has those endorsements and you're flying in their airplane, for example, um, this happened to me. I flew with a friend in his Bonanza when I didn't have any additional endorsements, just a Cessna pilot, you know. Um, and uh, he let me fly some of the time and he said I could log it. And I wasn't quite sure how that worked, uh, but uh, upon further research, realized yes, you know, I could log that time because he was able to act as PIC of the aircraft because he has the qualified endorsements. But as sole manipulator of the controls, uh, doing a little bit of flying, I'm able to log that time. And um, this can also happen during flight training. If you already have your private pilot certificate and you're going for a tailwheel endorsement or complex endorsement, high performance endorsement, while you're doing that training with your flight instructor, you can log PIC time uh, during that training. It sounds a little bit contradictory because you don't have that endorsement yet. However, that endorsement is required to act as PIC, not to log as PIC. Now, if we look at uh, 61.51, uh, section E, it says that logging pilot and command flight time, a sport, recreational, private, commercial, or airline transport pilot, may log pilot in command time for flights. Um, and in section I, it says, except when logging flight time under 61.159C, when the pilot is sole manipulator of the controls of an aircraft for which the pilot is rated. That's what it says. And uh, it, that really comes down to what does it mean to be rated? And an FAA interpretation said that rated only applies to category, class, and type uh, because those are the ratings that the FAA gives. And things like the tailwheel endorsement, uh, the complex endorsement, high performance endorsements, those are all endorsements. Those aren't really ratings. Those are um, a sign off from an instructor. So you need those in order to act as pilot in command of an aircraft that requires it. However, you don't need it for logging time. So in that way, you can go and get some flight training for tailwheel. And in those hours that you're training for that uh, tailwheel endorsement, uh, your flight instructor is going to be acting as PIC because the flight instructor has the endorsement. You do not. However, you can be logging PIC time for all the time you're flying the aircraft as the sole manipulator of the controls. Don't let them uh, strip you of that additional time that you could be logging. And um, my personal story with that was I wanted to start my instrument training and I wanted to do it in a Piper Aero complex airplane. I had not yet had the complex endorsement. And the flight instructor said that uh, I would not be able to log the uh, PIC time, even though I was private pilot at that time without the complex. Uh, said I wouldn't be able to do it. And uh, I did some research. I found the FARs and the um, uh, legal interpretation from the FAA council. I presented that to the flight instructor as evidence. And uh, he spent a bunch of time and researched it. I mean, we had a kind of a debate over it for a while. And finally, he conceded and said, you know what, you're right. I found it. And yes, we'll log you that time. And that sounded like a good victory. But what really frustrated me is he charged me and never refunded me the t uh, flight instruction time, the ground school time. He charged me while going through this. And I, I, I thought that, okay, look, if I'm wrong and the flight instructor taught me something, totally should be paying for that. But if the flight instructor is wrong and I was right, I mean, if, if not getting paid for it myself, at the very least, you know, you shouldn't be charging me uh, to be giving you a lesson, Mr. Flight Instructor. So that was the first time that I cut it off with a flight instructor where I got frustrated. Not only that the flight instructor was wrong, I mean, it, it took some convincing. I was able to convince him otherwise, but uh, very frustrating that um, he charged me for uh, not knowing the answer. So I didn't really... Uh, get along well, and that was the first uh, time I cut and flight instructor loose over that.
Now this brings me to uh, a second story of a different flight instructor that uh, something happened like that too. Actually, I got kicked out of that flight school and they didn't want to deal with me anymore after I proved the flight instructor to be wrong. Um, this was in the case of uh, doing some tailwheel training. Um, in fact, I already had my tailwheel endorsement, but hadn't flown tailwheel in a bunch of years. I was looking to uh, get recurrent, reproficient, and be able to uh, rent a J3 Cub at that airport. And uh, I went for a flight with the flight instructor and did pretty well and had fun. And um, at the end of it, he's filling out the logbook and I said, yep, uh, can you also put in the PIC time? And he refused. He said that I cannot log PIC time for that flight. And I said, uh, why not? He said, because you don't have a tailbone endorsement. I said, yes, actually, I already do have it. He looked that up and um, I did. Uh, but he said, nope, because uh, you're not current. So therefore, you could not be PIC for this flight. So you cannot log it. And this is where, uh, similar to the first one uh, about the com not needing the complex endorsement or the tailwheel rating for that matter, I could have logged that time even if I didn't have the tailwheel rating. Now this comes to uh, proficiency of flight and uh, recency of experience. Um, do you need to be current in order to be able to log PIC time? And um, the FAR 61.57 says that general experience, except as provided in paragraph E of this section, no person may act as pilot in command of an aircraft carrying passengers or uh, of an aircraft certified for more than one pilot flu flight crew member unless the person has made at least three takeoffs and three landings within the preceding 90 days, and the person acted as the sole manipulator of the flight controls. And the required takeoff and landings were performed in an aircraft of the same category, class, and type if a type rating is required, and if the aircraft to be flown is an airplane with a tailwheel, the takeoffs and landings must have been made to a full stop in an airplane with a tailwheel. So yes, it does actually have some specifications about a tailwheel, but it says in order to be current in a tailwheel, you need to make them to a full stop and it has to be done in a tailwheel aircraft. That's not a type rating, that's the same category, same class, single engine land. So uh, J3 Cub and a Cessna uh, Skyhawk are both single engine land airplanes. They are the same category and class. My airman certificate says single engine land, same category and class. Therefore, uh, I would not qualify as PIC to take passengers. I would not qualify as PIC to take that flight instructor for a ride. However, with the flight instructor being fully qualified to act as PIC, that means that I am the sole manipulator of the controls. I do not need to be current in order to be act as manipula sole manipulator of the controls. And in order to log that time, I only need to be rated in the same category and class and type and act as sole manipulator of the controls. I did not have to act as PIC in order to be able to log that um, pilot in command time in that J3 Cub. So uh, I started talking about this with the flight instructor. He disagreed with me. Uh, I said, let's look it up in the regs. And that's when uh, he got his panties up in a wad and got really mad and uh, threw the book at me, uh, metaphorically speaking. But uh, I, I, I forget if he even looked it up or not. I think he refused to look it up saying, I'm the instructor and you're not, uh, or maybe we did look it up, but in either case, I remember that he got really, really pissy about it and said that, you know, if I, um, I'm gonna second guess him that uh, he doesn't wanna work with me and they pretty much threw me out of that school. On the other hand, I didn't wanna work with a flight instructor that A, is wrong, I don't, I don't wanna learn from someone that, you know, doesn't know something, and B, more importantly, much more importantly than being wrong, I mean, everyone can be wrong about something, but if you can't man up and, uh, you know, learn from your mistakes and be open to greater discovery and say, wow, you know, okay, uh, learn something I didn't know, you know, look it up, discover. If, if you can't uh, grow with new information presented, then you're not learning. And uh, I believe that every pilot and flight instructor, ATP, you know, with someone with 100 hours, 10 hours, 1,000 hours, we're always learning. So if you cannot, um, you know, accept that there could be more information to it and maybe look into it further and learn from that, then um, that's not someone that I feel comfortable flying with because I feel like that means that their learning has stopped who knows how long ago and um, they're not the best uh, pilot that they can be. Um, and now the third scenario where you could log PIC time without being directly qualified to log that is uh, while um, doing uh, instrument training by acting as a safety pilot. Uh, the safety pilot does uh, need to be, um, uh, they need to have a medical and they need to uh, be able to act as pilot in command in order to be able to log that as PIC time. So two scenarios. One scenario is you got a Skyhawk and you've got 
two pilots, both are private pilot. One of them is uh, doing some instrument training and wants to be under the hood. The other guy is the safety pilot. If the safety pilot is qualified to act as pilot in command, that means they have to be current, they have to have their medical, they have to be uh, rated a single engine uh, land airplane. So they could just as well be the only pilot and uh, fly that airplane. That safety pilot can agree to act as the pilot in command as in addition to the safety pilot, while the sole manipulator of the controls under the hood uh, would be also logging time. They both log time. One at logs time as the pilot in command, the other logs time as sole manipulator of the controls. Um, now, on the other hand, it's possible that uh, the safety pilot is not qualified to act as PIC. For example, he may not be current. Now, he can act as the um, uh, safety pilot, as far as I can tell, because he's still rated in category and class. He has a medical. He meets the requirements. However, by not being current, he cannot act as pilot in command with a passenger on board. That would be the other pilot. Therefore, he cannot uh, log that. He cannot act as PIC, and he cannot log that time because he's not acting as PIC. He can, however, log second in command time. Another scenario is uh, an airplane where the um, an additional endorsement is required. So, for example, in my Mooney, a uh, complex re re uh, rating is required. My safety pilot, if he has a um, uh, endorsement for uh, complex, can act as the pilot command and double log. Both of us could log time if I'm under the hood. On the other hand, if he's a Cessna-only pilot, does not have a complex endorsement, he can be the safety pilot without the complex uh, rating because uh, he is in the same category in class and can act as the safety pilot. However, he cannot log that time as pilot in command because he is not um, qualified to actually act as the pilot in command while I'm pilot in command uh, while I'm sole manipulator of the controls. Therefore, as the airplane's owner, as the pilot in command of the airplane, I would be logging pilot in command under the hood both as the sole manipulator of the controls and as the pilot in command. Therefore, the safety pilot can only log uh, SIC time, second in command, by being a required crew member to look out the window uh, while the pilot in command, the sole manipulator controls, is under the hood. So those are a few minor distinctions, but there you have it. That's three ways to be able to log PIC time in a bit of an unexpected way. Kind of a loophole, but uh, these things have been clarified uh, by the FAA in uh, letters of interpretation. So these are legitimate ways to log PIC time. However, they're quite quirky, so they seem like a loophole. The language is, it's not that the language isn't clear, the language is actually quite clear, it's not a loophole. These things are allowed, it's just that they're not explicitly allowed, and they're not disallowed. So the fact that they're not disallowed, and the rules create a possibility for this, and the FAA has not changed the rules, and they've issued letters of interpretation that say that this is acceptable, that means that these are really legitimate ways that it, are um, anticipated or are permitted to log PIC time additionally. So the first one is to be able to log PIC time in a tailwheel complex or high performance airplane without having that endorsement while either receiving flight training from a qualified flight instructor or while uh, flying with a friend that is uh, properly endorsed. The As long as the other pilot is occupying a crew station and is acting as pilot in command, uh, you as sole manipulator controls during the time that you're handling and flying the airplane can log PIC time in an airplane that you don't have the additional endorsement for as long as you are a uh, private pilot or sport pilot, recreational pilot, suitably rated, and that you are um, um, uh, rated in the same category in class, single engine land. Second one uh, is that um, you log PIC time when you are not current uh, by flying with someone who is qualified to act as PIC. As long as you're the sole manipulator of the controls and the other pilot is acting as pilot in command, um, for example, a flight instructor or again, a friend, as long as they are current and they are acting as the pilot in command, you can log uh, pilot in command time, PIC time, while acting as sole manipulator of the controls, even though you would not be qualified to uh, engage and uh, control that flight as PIC. And the third one is you can log PIC time as a uh, safety pilot by acting as pilot in command. That, now you have to be fully qualified to be the pilot in command of that flight, but uh, while the other pilot under the hood is uh, sole manipulator of the controls, the safety pilot is acting as PIC and can also be logging PIC time. 
there you have it. Uh, those are some interesting facts from the regs. You can refer to FAR Part 61, uh, 6151, 6157, as well as um, some FAA rulings. I'll leave links in the description so that you can read up on these for yourself. Don't take my word for it. Don't take your instructor's word for it. Look up the regs. Talk to the FAA if you need to. Uh, and uh, safe flying. Thanks for watching. And see you some other time. Bye.